rudimentary motocross geography as it is, we don't really have much to analyze. We just essentially look at the listing of where the rider is either born and raised or lives now and try to assume how they will do in the conditions for a given weekend. That's why when there's a mud race, you always hear like, oh, this guy comes from X state where they're just born in the mud and they grow up in it. What's up? Oh, what's up, Mr. Ferry? <laughs> have a good weekend? I had a fantastic weekend. Was it good to have a race back here in Florida? 22 years, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, but you probably remember Gainesville like 97 like it was last week. Well, I wish it was last week, but it wasn't. Okay. It was 22 years ago. <laughs> You're a little older now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We loved it though. We'll get the grandkids out here as pros someday. Oh, absolutely. Okay. okay. Next okay. generation. Likewise. That's Tim Ferry's dad, or should I say Evan Ferry's granddad working his way through the ranks. So anyway, yes, we were back in Florida for the first time in 22 years and we used our rudimentary motocross geography to figure out who would be good in the heat and humidity and the sandy conditions here at WW Ranch for round five of Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. And pretty much exactly what we thought would happen did not happen at all. So much for the geography advanced information. This is your race recap from Lucas Oil Pro Motocross from WW Ranch. It's the Weed Show brought to you by Racetech if you saw any of the clips of the racing this weekend, you know how difficult this track was. You really have to have suspension that works. So check out a set of gold valves. Your suspension will be plusher, better bottoming resistance, more traction, and gold valves are engineered and made in the USA. And we will even give you a set. Description is beneath this video. Send an email and you can enter for a sweepstakes to win, plus a race tech swag bag. Yeah, so back to how the results turned out. Adam C. and Cerullo in the 250 class wins four, four, four in a row coming into his home state. Dude, he's gonna rule the world here at this race, right? Nope. This ended up being the worst race for him of the year. So, yeah, you on video, guys. Yeah, Cowie's happy. They win moto number two. We knew Eli Tomac, I mean, look, he struggles in heat and humidity. He's the one rider that's not based in Florida. He did win the second moto today. Meanwhile, uh, the riders who were expected to struggle in the 250 class end up going 1-2. So there's the not humidity trained, California based Justin Cooper and the not humidity trained, California based Frenchman Dylan Ferrandis. They go 1-2 today. Ferrandis, typical bad start in Moto1. Finally a good start in Moto2 and he shows what he can do with it. He won it. Cooper does not win the first Moto like he did for the first three races of the year when he won all the first Motos. This time he finishes second in Moto1 second in Moto2, and finally, 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 Justin Cooper has won a professional race, so close to Supercross, so close overall Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, finally gets it. It's one of our French journalists. And what a redemption day it is for Cooper, not only proving, by the way, that you don't have to live and train in Florida to ride well at the Florida race, but a big bounce back after a ninth at High Point, which was certainly subpar for him and left everyone wondering, Maybe this kid doesn't have the championship medal. Maybe the pressure got too high. Maybe the controversy and the fans not being pumped and the things he said after th uh, Thunder Valley, maybe that all got to him. Whatever, he raced it, he won. And what you wanna see when someone wins a first race, you wanna see them go all out to get it. It was so brutal out here today. He rode well on the track, but once it's time for podium interviews, he was in no condition whatsoever. You wanna know that when someone wins their first race, they earned it, and he absolutely did. Ferranda second overall. Cian Cerullo was just subpar based on the performances he had set in the first four rounds. Third overall is good, but he just never had anything for the Yamaha riders today. Now there's another Florida-based rider that Cincerillo trains with, Chase Sexton. He rode amazing in the first moto. Check the box for him. First career moto win for Sexton. But even all that preparation, the riding and training, the humidity of Florida every day, like Sexton does, he went through the wall, over the wall, past the wall, hit the wall. After that first moto, he was spent. He had nothing left for moto two. He only did a few laps and he was done. So the humidity training, whatever, man, you just don't know. Let's go to the 450 class. So I mentioned Tomac and those Cowie folks back there getting the Moto2 win, but it was the bad Eli Tomac in the first Moto. He was buried off the start, said he just spun on the sand. Came back to seventh. It was not an impressive seventh. In fact, Freddie Noren was battling with him for a while. Uh, Blake Baggett got Eli. At one point, Eli got him back. Then Baggett almost got him again. Just a subpar ride. Eli said in the press conference, it was a combo. Part of it was the bad start. Part of it was on me. They made some bike changes after practice. They weren't good. Didn't help him. Moto2, then Tomac gets a whole shot. When was the last time you saw Tomac get a whole shot at a Lucas Oil Pro Motocross race? And he went on to win the moto, but it was so different than almost any race we've ever seen. Because it was so brutal today, the conditions and the track was so rough, it was like 
a game of chess where people would put in a charge and then they'd hang back and then they'd charge again. Jason Anderson gave Tomac all he could handle early in the race. He ran out of steam. Moosecam put on a charge. He ran out of steam. Late in the race, Zach Osborne came after Tomac. He just ran out of time. But everyone was managing the energy. The rider that did it best today, yeah, he does ride in Florida. Was he born and raised here? No, but he used his Florida knowledge, unlike some of the other riders, to his favor. Because Marvin Muscan is finally back in victory lane. It's been a, by his standards, rough start to the season for Marv. He wins the first moto and impressively, he ran down Ken Roxon to do it. He rode really well. In moto two, it looked like he was gonna go 1-1, where he was trying to run down Tomac at one point and got close. He ran out of energy, but the 1-3 moto scores were still enough for him to get the overall. So finally, we have a non Roxon or Tomac winner in the 450 class. We've been saying that other riders in the class could beat them. Now we're finally seeing it, and Muscan's back to his old standards as getting back into title contention. And he said a lot of it comes down to the bike. They just went back to the 2018 settings, and it made a big, big difference for Marv. This is where all my TV stuff was today. They're packing it up. That's the TV compound, as we call it. So Muscan gets the win. Tomac goes 7-1. That doesn't sound impressive, but believe it or not, he extends his points lead because the heat and humidity got to the heat and humidity trained Ken Roxon in Moto2. Roxon was great in Moto1, finished second. Moto2, he faded, man, went all the way back to 10th. So the 210 for Roxon is even worse than Tomac's 7-1. So Tomac ends up second overall and stretches his points lead. They were tied coming in. Tomac's got a few points on Kenny now. I think the real question is, can Kenny recover in time for another sand race at Southwick coming up this weekend? And was this the indicator that some of those illness, fatigue, syndrome issues that Kenny was having at one point, did they finally rear their ugly head? I'd have to imagine. I mean, 10th place in a moto is not what Ken Roxon is usually all about. So that might tell a huge story in the championship if he can't recover and be back and strong for Southwick. But as we learned, with practically every moto this year, every time you think you've got it figured out what's going to happen, the script completely changes. So going into Southwick, forget who's good in sand, forget who's been good in previous weeks, just forget everything, start over. That's what makes for some really good racing. Hope to see you there.